we're going to have a look at patterns. Imagine we're making these little patterns out of matchsticks and we want to figure out how many matchsticks would it need we would we need in order to make figure 100. So what we can do is just start by counting. So in figure 1 we've got 1 2 3 4 5 6 matches. And then we could go to figure 2 and we could count we've got 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 matches and then we could do the same count for figure 3 and go on like that. Now obviously that's going to be a problem in that by the time we get to figure 100 it's going to take us an awfully long time to go and individually count all those matches. So what we really want to do is be a little bit more intelligent in how we look at it so we start to try and see what pattern there is there. So let me show you what I mean by this. If we look at figure 2 you can see that in figure 2 you've taken the little house that was in figure 1 and then you've added on 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 more matches. So you've got 11 matches. Taken the 6 that were in figure 1, added on 5 and you get to 11. And then if you have a look at figure 2, I mean figure 3, here you have all the matches that you had in figure 2 and then you add it on exactly the same, one, two, three, four, five more. So what you're going to have here is you're going to have 16 matches. And then you can quite easily picture what would happen for figure four. Because if you picture figure four, it's going to have everything that was in figure three. And then you're going to put on those five more matches around the side and so you're going to have 21. And this sort of way of seeing a pattern is going to help us figure out how um, to get to the hundredth, uh, the, how many matches are in the hundredth pattern. So now if we just put down carefully the structure of what we were seeing we can get to a formula which will help us to determine the number of matches in any figure. So what we saw is that what we were adding on each time was this little five picture of five matches. So what we can say is in figure one, we had this one match plus five matches. Now in figure two, we had the one match and the five matches, and we've got another five matches. In other words, we've got one match and two lots of the five matches. When we get to figure 3, we've got the one little match here, and then one, two, three lots of five matches. So then, we can quite easily figure out, well, what will happen with figure 4? Well, you're just simply going to be putting on a, another lot of five matches to the end. So you're going to have the one plus four lots of five matches. So, for figure 100, how many matches will you need? Well, it'll be 1 plus, and in this case you're going to have 100 of those little lots of 5 matches. And if you actually want to get the real answer to that, it's 501. Now what we want is a general formula. We want to say, for any um, number, well, how will we work out the number of matches? Well, it'll be 1 plus n lots of five right because if we had figure two it'll be one plus two lots of five for figure three one plus three lots of five for figure 100 one plus 100 lots of five so for figure n it'll be one plus n lots of five and then just to write that nicely in terms of algebra you remember that in algebra we write n times five typically we just write that as five n and more conventionally, we'd write it as 5n plus 1. So this formula can easily help us then if we wanted to know how many matches there were in figure 20, we would just say it is 5 times 20 plus 1, which is 101. Okay, I want you to try this one. Open your homework books and see if you can figure out for me how many dots there'll be in the fourth figure, the tenth figure, and the nth figure. Okay, hopefully no you noticed that for each new figure, we're simply adding on two more dots, one on either end.
And so what one can see is that in uh, figure one, you've got the three dots in the center piece and then just one lot of two dots. Um, and then for the second one, you've still got these three dots in the center, but now you've added on two lots of two dots. And then in the third one, you have still got the three in the center, but this time you've added three lots of two dots. And so then that gives us an easy pattern. We start to see figure four. We'll have the three in the center, but now we'll have four lots of two dots, right? And in figure 10, pattern continues. You'll have three in the center, but now you'll have 10 lots of two dots. Um, and so then in figure N, you'll have the three in the center and you'll have N lots of two dots. And that we can write as 2N plus 3. Now, just obviously with these um, things here, obviously we can get the final answer, right? It's five dots, then it's seven dots, then it's um, nine dots, then it's 11 dots, and then figure 10 will be 23 dots, okay? But just remember, don't get to this answer too quickly because it was seeing it like this that helped us see the pattern, seeing three plus two dots. Here, three plus two lots of two dots, three plus three lots of two dots, right? This form here is the useful form for seeing the pattern, right? We can get the number easily afterwards. Okay, but now we've got the pattern. We know that for any figure, we can figure it out by saying, so figure in, the number of dots will be 2n plus 3. So if we want to know how many dots in figure 21, we will then say that will be equal to 2 times 21 plus 3. 2 times 21 is 42. 42 plus 3 is 45. And then we can also actually do it the other way. Which figure will have 63 dots? Well, now we want to say that 2n plus 3, because that's the number of dots, must be equal to 63. And we've got a little equation to solve. And so we'll say 2n is 60, subtracting 3 from both sides of the equation. And then divide both sides of the equation by 2 will get us that n is 30. So this tells us that figure 30 has 63 dots. Okay, let's look at what we've observed here in order to um, help us um, get answers to patterns questions much more quickly. So if we have a look here, um, the, when we did this one, right, we noticed that each time we went up, we were adding on five uh, more matches to the pattern, right? So from figure one to figure two, figure two to figure three, we're adding on five matches to the pattern. And we came up in the end with a formula of 5n plus 1. So when we were adding on 5, each time we came up with a formula, 5n plus 1. Now in this case, we added on two extra dots for each time we moved up in the pattern. And we came that this pattern had a formula, 2n plus 3. So when we added on 2 each time, right, the nth pattern will have n lots of 2 dots plus 3. This, if we observe that, that when it's Adding on 5, we get a 5n. Adding on 2, we get a 2n. It's going to help us get to the answer for patterns very quickly and easily. So if we have a look at this pattern, we can see easily that in figure 1, there's one dot. And when we go to figure 2, what we've done is we've added on four more dots. So we have five. And then when we go to figure 3, we've added on another four dots around the edge. And so we've got nine. So now we know from what we've just observed that if we're going to go to figure n, it's going to be 4n, and then we're going to have plus something or minus something after that. So we've got to figure out what. So this one here for figure 1, it's 4 times 1, and then it's plus something or minus something must give you the answer of 1. And then here, this one, it's going to be 4 times 2 because it's figure 2. And then it's plus something or minus something must give you the answer of 5. And here, 4 times 3 
and its plus something or minus something must give you the answer of 9. So let's try and figure out what that plus something or minus something is. Well, 4 times 1 is 4, so to get to 1, I'd have to subtract 3. And let's just check then, 4 times 2 is 8. Yes, if I just subtract 3, I do get to 5. And 4 times 3 is 12, and if I subtract 3, I do just get to 9. So I know my formula then is 4n minus 3. So in other words, in figure n, there's 4n minus 3. This helps me then if I want to know what, what happens to figure 100. It's going to be 4 times 100 minus 3, which is 400 minus 3, which is 379. Now, our patterns don't always have to come as pictures. So we could, for example, have a pattern which is just in numbers. So it goes, as it goes up, 4, 10, 16, 22, 28. So the first term in our pattern is 4, second term is 10, the third one is 16, the fourth one is 22, and the fifth one is 28. And if we want to work out now what, for example, would be term number n, um, a formula for that, and that will help us get to figure out, say, what is term 100. We can use exactly the same idea that we've just been using. So we can observe to go from there to there is a plus 6 each time, right? Each time you're going up, you're adding on 6 more. So we know from what we've just discussed that our term n will be 6n, and then it's going to be plus something or minus something. And we go back here to work out what, right? So for term 1, it would have been 6 times 1, and then we've got to do plus something or minus something to get us the answer of 4. And hopefully you can see quite easily that that should just be it's taking away 2. Let's just check, because it's got to work for every term. This would be 6 times 2. It's 12. And if we subtract 2, do we get 10? Yes, right? And we could carry on checking, right? This one would be 6 times 3 is 18, minus 2 does give me 16. So this minus 2, we now can be pretty sure, is what needs to go on for term n. So 6n minus 2. And then to get term 100 is easy. It'll be 6 times 100 subtract 2, which is 600 subtract 2, which is 598.